Hello everyone and welcome back to Stalker Gamma Beginner Guide Labs. So in this episode I'm gonna go over the next lab that you will probably encounter after the Miracle Machine which is the Brain Scorcher. So the Brain Scorcher only takes about 10 minutes if you've done Miracle Machine you from what I remember you do get a time bonus because the Brain Scorcher will be timed so you only have a I think it's six, seven minutes if you don't disable the brain, the miracle machine, or ten minutes if you do. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. This used to be the case. I'm not sure if it still is, but at this point, the miracle machine is disabled, so we should have all the time in the world. But the brain scorcher is only half the problem here. The other part is the entrance is right underneath a monolith base. And to get to the monolith base, we have to pass through the rest of Radar, which is full of high-level mutants, like uh, Chimera's pseudo-giants controllers, plus some other things like uh, dogs, lurkers, you never know what you'll encounter, zombies. Um, yeah, so there are two ways to go about this. I've seen players go through the forest and come out, there's a little hole in the fence right here. My problem with this is uh, you will encounter, usually at the entrance point, there are some high level mutants. Uh, and also it will put you out right in the middle of this road, which um, on the road up to the monolith base, there are patrols. And also towards the east, there are even more monolith patrols and this is actually a checkpoint that they have so what i usually do is i just take the road it's a little bit simpler you don't get lost in the forest there's not such a huge risk of meeting uh, high level mutants and by the time you reach this spot here uh, you may find that the monolith there has been dealt with by a pseudo giant or a chimera you never know but yeah, I'll do Radar as well, just because it's kind of part of the Brain Scorcher run. And honestly, I think getting to the Brain Scorcher is harder than the actual Brain Scorcher. So what I have for gear, I try to emulate kind of what I would take at a minimum to go into the Brain Scorcher. And what I have here is... Uh, an exosuit, not the powered exoskeleton, just a heavy armor exosuit, which are usually the best uh, BR class and ballistic resistance uh, heavy armors out there. I picked the mercenary one. I think there are better exosuits, but uh, yeah, you're going to be facing a lot of bullets and not a lot of mutants. So BR class and ballistic resistance is the most important here. Also got a spear M12 helmet. These should drop pretty often. They are the best heavy helmet in the game. Uh, except, of course, uh, exoskeleton helmets, which uh, are a totally different thing. You should be able to create a heavy repair kit by this time, even with advanced tools, although it's a bit more expensive, so you should be able to fix uh, heavy armors. As for the weapons, we of course have a knife, we have a night vision, which I do recommend having because sometimes it does get dark in there. I'm not sure if I'll use it, we'll see. A good rifle. I took the G36K because uh, honestly, it's it's a mid-level rifle. You, you could just as well take a, a 5.45 AK and you'll do good. But uh, I just wanted to try out the G36. Um, last time I did the Brain Scorcher on my own, I actually had an AK-105 Specialist, which I actually kind of like. But you can take whatever you want. Just make sure it's a good rifle or at least a very good SMG. Um, in my Invictus run, I actually took an SR-3M Vicar, which uses 9x39, and that does make everything a little bit easier, but it's not fixable with advanced tools, so 
I, I kind of got lucky and found one with a good barrel. We also have a Saiga Nerd. It's... I, I prefer automatic shotguns. So I took the Saiga, but you can take other stuff. It's just for dealing with the mutants that you might find on the way. We also have our Colt uh, 1911, though I don't expect we will use that. I also have a Chimera Hide, but this is basically just because it's what I have from my Ecologist run. I am using the Ecologist character, it's Dr. Krominov. Uh, so I kind of took what I had. Right, for ammo, I suggest you have at least about 400 AP for the actual Brain Scorcher and another 3 to 4, 400 FMJ for outside. You will meet people, a uh, monolith in uh, exosuits, so they are sometimes hard to take down, so it's good to have that AP ammo loaded up. We also have a few uh, repair, uh, minor repair kits, in case we get damaged upstairs in the base. And other things I always take with me here are always take a couple of epinephrines or at least hercules because you will kill about 50 60 monolith at a minimum and you will carry a lot of loot both in and out and you don't want your stamina running out on the way of course your standard um your standard um damn it i'm missing a word here your standard meds i took nine charges of uh, basic med kits, 12 charges of army med kits, and I also have military stim, stim packs for emergencies. Uh, seven charges of this for um, post healing the body, and of course ibuprofen for post healing the arms and legs, which are usually your most damaged parts. And also make sure you take some anti-rads some rad protectant or anything else because radar is pretty radioactive. We also have some good food, flesh bacon and pork chops. And uh, yeah, I think that's all you need. So with that said, let's uh, get on with the run and see what happens. Right, sometimes I also take a sniper rifle, it makes dealing with the monolith on the way a little bit easier, but um, not everyone has access to a good sniper rifle at this point of the game. So we will just go with the shotgun and the rifle. Now, you need to keep your ears healed <laughs> here. The actual... Brain Scorcher does uh, muffle the sounds around you a little bit. You can actually hear it in the distance. So do take care. All right. I keep looking to the left because sometimes you will get attacked by mutants from there. So do make sure you pay attention or you may have chimeras jumping on your head. <laughs> right. Uh, also, by the tank here, there are sometimes zombies or other mean stuff. And here are those rats I was talking about. There may be even more, just avoid the anomalies here, not a big deal. And usually either here or behind that um, armored... Uh, that's an APC, right? Uh, you could encounter some things like uh, chimeras, viewers, controllers there is kind of a spawn point here for mutants. Uh, it seems clear right now. Oh, not sure what that's about. But um, I guess we just got lucky. And behind those pipes are the first monolith you will probably encounter. So we'll pull out our rifle and uh, let's get ready to deal with them. Nothing here yet. Now, sometimes the patrols don't even spawn.
so you can kind of get lucky like that but there's one luckily the g36 is uh pretty accurate and has basically no recoil which is uh awesome i didn't expect it to be uh this good okay here we go more rats oh crap that was the wrong time to start smoking. Ah, these vices. <laughs> right, let's see. Let's see who who's the angry guy that was shooting at us. Can't get him from here. Where is he running though? Oh, that was a uh, good, I guess. Okay, I'm gonna try to go around these uh, big metal things because they tend to be very radioactive. And even with rad resist, uh, we are taking a lot of radiation. Don't see anyone else around. Okay, while you're out here, you can also loot. And uh, I'm gonna try and take... We don't really need anything right now, but I will take... Um, I will take the ammo that's uh, dropped. Just because uh, you never need know when you might need it. Oh yes, another thing I forgot. We also got a lot of grenades. Um... I generally like taking a lot of grenades with me whenever I'm doing any of these dungeons. Um, sometimes a good grenade can drop a whole room of monolith. And if not, it will at least uh, make them uh, clear out a little bit. Right, so that's the hole in the fence I was talking about, somewhere over there. And mutants do come and come through between the fences there. So uh, it's sometimes a good idea if you have a mine to just place one right there at the entrance. And if mutants do decide to show up, uh, they might just blow up. Otherwise, do keep an eye out there. But we're nicely going around. All right. Second part here is this winding road, which is full of anomalies. So do watch out for those. And there should be another monolith camp here luckily it's empty but do watch out for this one they sometimes uh, sometimes shoot you through the foliage and uh it's it's not a fun thing right another patrol can be up here there are some sandbags there oh this is very red it, it got extra sunny here Right, let's just go nice and slow. And uh, yeah, a lot of burners here, among other anomalies. Don't see any monolith. Now, these anomalies are pretty random, so uh, try to be aware of that and uh, pay attention every time. Right, so. There are two ways of taking out this space. At least, uh, well, there are three ways, but uh, I'm going to tell you the two ways I like best. One of them is setting up uh, behind the sandbag. And you see that little um, part of the fence there. If you go all the way to this, uh, the part of the fence ends right here. So if you go and kill one of the monoliths you will usually aggro kind of half the base if not all of it and you can actually pull back right here really fast and sort of just pop them as they come around the fence but that can take a lot of time it can take like 10 minutes until they they finally decide to to come at you uh so i don't really like doing this it's much safer but it's not really my style so um yeah, the other way is trying to go through the hole in the fence in the back here. It will also aggro the whole place, 
but there is a little bit of cover there. Problem is, you do end up getting swarmed a lot of the time when doing this, so that's my least favorite strategy. And my most favorite, I will do it right now, I will go all the way up to this fence, I will shoot, there are four towers, actually three towers, you can see them by the little squares here, one, two, and three, which have snipers, I will come up here, shoot the sniper in the tower here, maybe take the other two out, and then run all the way to, there's three trees around here by the fence, and I'll take cover there, and they will come at me through the gate here. So that's what I will do right now. Those three, three trees kinda protect you from a lot of uh, the incoming fire. So. The only thing you have to worry at that point is uh, mostly grenades. Okay. So I just had the game crash when entering the Brain Scorcher, which is a thing that happens to me lately. Don't know why. Okay, there is one monolith guy. And we dropped him. Checking the other towers. Got one. And there should be another tower right there. Which is empty. Alright. And now we run. I'll take some rad resist. Because there are some rad pockets around here. And we will just rush all the way up to the road here. Watch out for anomalies. There's usually two monolith guys here. Seems like not. And what we can do is uh, get right here behind the pipes. If you have good rad resist, this, there's usually a rad pocket in there. Or we can get right here behind the trees, which is my personal favorite spot. Now, sometimes the base doesn't even uh, spawn, so you might get lucky and not have to fight your way in, but you might have to fight your way out, and always look at the towers, because um, monolith like to climb back on them, or even respawn over there. But it seems there's nothing, so let's just uh, push in a little bit and see what's happening here. Right. Got a couple of them. Okay, and they, they heard me, so I'm gonna run all the way back to my favorite spot in the trees here, and hopefully we won't take any grenades. Ah, there's one. I can do that too. <laughs> Now, if they don't want to come at you, you can always just uh, hide behind the tree and uh, reload your weapon. And yeah, again, always watch out for grenades here, because that's kind of the only thing that uh, can uh, completely ruin your fun. Oh, that was a lot of spent ammo. Okay, there's at least another one there, and... Oh boy, okay. And that's what I mean with the grenades. Because the AI, the AI always knows where you are, so they can actually chuck grenades right over the fence at you. And, uh, yeah, I'm actually... a little bit out of practice here. with my aiming and these guys have big armor and I'm shooting just standard FMJ because I want to save my uh, good ammo for the actual brain scorcher all right one's down there's at least another one in there Can 
Anyone else? Right. Oh, as I always say, when in doubt, bush. They're sometimes in the trees here, but the good thing about coming here in the evening is that you can actually see their flashlights most of the time. And it appears we're clear, hopefully. I don't see any weird lights. Tower looks mostly clear. Oh, a little lag spike over there. The other towers... Look clear, okay. So, I'm also gonna go on the other side and um, check to see if there's any patrols coming back. Sometimes they aggro to the hole in the wall. And uh, once you go too far, they'll just start walking back because you went out of uh, aggro range. So it's a good thing to double check that area. It looks like we're clear. Okay. So at this point, you can start looting. Um, with these guys in the watchtower, if you can double check from below if they're actually dead, would be very good because uh, if not they sometimes will drop grenades that's that's a monolith thing they do that okay let's heal up our leg as well oh really getting hit by one of those is usually the stupidest way to die we're also a little bit hungry, so we can grab something to eat as well. And we're gonna quickly check to see if we can grab some ammo. There's the 556. I think it was uh, HP, but honestly, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna take the bandage as well. Oh, that's actually a really nice weapon. I'm not gonna take it right now, though it's uh, gonna weigh me down. We have enough water, and I'm not gonna go for the other guy. Alright, so that was the way to the Brain Scorcher. I think we got off a little bit easy this time, there weren't a lot of monolith here, but uh, sometimes there's double the amount that we saw coming in, so do watch out. And we go through the train here, and this is the entrance to the Brain Scorcher. And right now I'm gonna start pre-medding, I forgot to say we also have morphine which is always a good idea to have before jumping into a dungeon. Um, it's 50%, 15% damage reduction and that's pretty huge. And I'll also take the epi just because uh, it clears the tiredness and I don't want to run out of stamina while running inside the Brain Scorcher. Right, so let's jump right in. Right, so here we are in the Brain Scorcher. You can see the timer up on the top right. We should have ample time. So I'm gonna check real quick to this uh, hole in the wall because sometimes you can get them. Well, one or two monolith guys. And also I realized I forgot to fix my armor. Should be good now. Right. So, the thing to remember about the Brain Scorcher is the path and kind of the general place where uh, Monolith has uh, spawn points. 
So let's move in. We do have a lot of grenades on us. That's one. And we're going to go right. There's probably going to be another one in this room here. Oh, there's two of them. Pull back, pull back. And, uh... Oh, that's a grenade. Oh, crap. Yeah, that, that didn't work as planned. But yeah, uh, remember, Monolith doesn't always spawn where you want them to. So be prepared, kind of, for anything. But generally, they will be in the same spots. Guy with an arm, arm cell. Great. All right. Oh, there's more up there. Are you serious? Well, sometimes it does happen that the whole floor is, floor is pulled. And, uh... There's a guy behind us, and there's another guy in there. And that's why we brought grenades. Right, he's dead. Oh boy. Yeah, this hallway is stupid. Like, real stupid. Because in that room, there's usually four or five guys, maybe more. So we will end up taking a lot of uh, time gearing it up. They're coming from that stairwell over the, to the other side. Oh boy, my aiming's bad. But we got them. But there's usually more, so let's uh, keep an eye on that stairwell. I think he's dead, but I'll throw a grenade in there just to be safe. Right, and uh, let's post heal our stuff. And um, you know what? I think armor repairs might be a good idea as well. We can just do it real fast with what we have laying around. Okay. There's usually a couple of guys to the right, but I like to check the left side as well. And... Okay, this room. One guy to the left right here. You saw him. And there can be another guy there, so... You didn't get him. Okay, now we did. Gonna do a little bandage, and there's another one or two guys behind that wall over there. Right, and there will be another guy, probably with a sniper, right there. And we got him. Right, we're kind of halfway through now. So, we're gonna go down the stairs. There's usually a guy at the bottom of the stairs, so we're going to have to pay attention to that. Sometimes he can push upstairs, so do watch out. And he usually is right here, but apparently I think he pushed upstairs. Oh, never mind. He was just hiding from us. Ah, but we aggroed the rest of them, so I'm just going to med up real fast. Reload. Oh, crap. Yeah. Not a fan of fighting on stairs.
Okay, I think we should be good here. Gonna do a quick check. Did I see something over there? No. Right, next room is probably one of the most annoying places. So I'm just gonna lob a couple of grenades in there. and an exo and there's another one behind those crates somewhere so let's see what a grenade does apparently nothing oh there's two of them and there's one more over there somewhere ah you fucker right Gonna have to met up. There might be others coming from the door over there. So we gotta be real careful. There he is. Oh crap. That was bad. Got him. Right. So, note to self. Always keep the weapon reloaded. Okay. This hallway and the next room are also pretty annoying. There's usually a guy on the other end. Through the door there. Oh, there he is. So usually I uh, do one of that. One of those grenades. Through there. This is the elevator shaft I was talking about earlier. And... Uh, right, that's clear. Alright, this room also usually has a couple of them pull back reload we have almost three minutes left so we should be good there will be more coming from this stairwell here usually there's a couple so i'll just pull back and let them come down at me better to clear them here than having to enter the room Oh, that guy actually had some big weapon. I think. Right. Uh, also, check upstairs. There's usually a guy there. And you can't hit him through the floor. Even though you can see through it. So just pay attention to that. Oh! Where are you? They can maneuver behind you, so do pay attention to that, and there's... Ooh! I didn't even see him, honestly. Alright, there's gonna be two more. But we should have enough time to deal with them. So one of them's gonna be in there. But we didn't get him. And we just... Heard something. Or I think I just heard something. Right. That one's down. And I think this should be it. Usually they don't come in the generator room. Yeah, with explaining and uh, having to med all the time, because I'm out of practice, we did take a little bit of extra time to get here. But the lever is right here. Rainbow emitter documents are right here. They're good for the military. And uh, I'm saying this first because uh, once you pull this lever, an emission will start outside and you will get the sound from it. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty loud. All right, so just because I, I don't want to leave you guys with the blue balls <laughs> when it comes to the loot you get, I'm also going to show you the way out looting. 
And one thing to note is don't be too confident when walking out because you might have missed the monolith and they can be waiting for you. So do make sure you check your corners. Sorry if I'm talking too loud. It's, um, well, scorchers loud. Yeah, the, the noises from this usually last um, a little bit. Did we miss one? Yes, we did. It's a big guy. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Okay, so... This weapon is... Uh, crazy. SR-25 with a functional barrel. Oh yeah. So, just that RD9x39, you're basically set. Even if it doesn't have a good barrel, it's good to take it right now. And uh, it's... If you manage to fix it once you get advanced weapon tools, that thing will carry you through the whole game. No problem. It's probably one of the best weapons in the game. It doesn't always drop here, but it can. And uh, yeah. Also, SR25 with a functional barrel. You can use this as a sniper rifle, no problem. Even though it's actually a uh, automatic weapon with 20 bullets, it's also pretty crazy. So yeah, uh, monolith drops amazing loot here sometimes other times it, it will be crap but in this case it worked out amazing but again i'm not taking everything because uh, this will not be staying on this account interesting weapon there i mean on this uh, save game because this is the Ecologist game, uh, which I basically just ran down to the Brain Scorcher with, with uh, added weapons. <laughs> but uh, if it, this were a real run, these two weapons are... They will easily last you all the way to endgame. Also, make sure you open these doors, because uh, there's a lot of ammo and um, meds in here. Just random stuff, ammo, more ammo, a groza. I'm not taking the parts again just because I don't uh, want to bother carrying them right now. Vityaz, honestly if you're here this headgear set is no longer important. But you see, it's a lot of loot. If I took all the parts, we would probably get to being overweight. So that's why I recommend taking the epinephrine always. Ooh, an AUG. All right, the crow sound doesn't usually happen. So I think there might be an emission outside. 
AK74N, a lot of EXO batteries. You can even uh, have exosuits drop from here, so uh, do keep an eye out. At this point of the game, a simple monolith exosuit can actually pull pretty good weight. Um, although it is very expensive to uh, keep functional, so keep that in mind. Uh, I don't remember if there were any documents here, but it's good to run a quick check just in case. Nope, nothing. Right. I, I can turn my own volume back up, because I had to put it down for the emission, and I'm sorry if I talked louder, I couldn't hear myself thinking, even with the volume down. <laughs> so, yeah, sorry for the... Uh, things. Right. Uh, not the best stuff, but nine by 39 ammo. Sure. Wait. This shoots 9 by 39? Oh, interesting. I didn't I didn't know that. Never used that weapon though, so. Okay, more ammo. AK-101. Um you can also get your hands on an AK, I think it's a 102 monolith here. Uh, if you don't have a good weapon, it's nice to upgrade. Oh, there's our SR3M. So, if you don't have an RD 9x39, or there's a better weapon than that, I think, some ISG version, you can always take a Vicar. It does less damage, from what I remember, by 4 points, but it's got the same stupid accuracy. And uh, this can also carry you through the end game, even though it's a Warshall-packed weapon um, and has less damage. Uh, I did use it even in the Invictus run. I used it all the way up to the end game, just because I couldn't find an RD nine by thirty nine. So, yeah. Uh, it's simply because once you put that target on someone, it just doesn't have any recoil. And it has really good accuracy, so... Uh, oh, an arm cell. <laughs> What's this? Oh, don't think I've ever seen one of these. Right, but that was it, honestly. Now, the other annoying part about the Brain Scorcher is uh, sometimes... Wasn't there another guy here? No. Sometimes, by the time you finish with the actual Brain Scorcher, uh, upstairs enemies begin to spawn back up, so you might have to fight your way out of radar as well. But... Uh, and that's also carrying a lot of loot, and that's why another set of morphine. But it's not a bad idea to uh, redo your morphine and epinephrine when coming out of the Brain Scorcher. And if you have the stuff, fix up your armor, fix your weapons, because you might have another fight waiting for you upstairs. But for now... That was it. Uh, I hope this guide really does help you out. Um, it's been a pretty hard run, honestly. I never had Monolith and the Brain Scorcher be so aggressive at, as they at, as they were this one, but it shows you what you can ex expect from from running the Brain Scorcher. And we actually had a pretty peaceful uh, monolith base, which is pretty good, and we also didn't meet any mutants, so we didn't need our um, our shotgun. But, yeah, we were really close to dying a couple of times. Fortunately, we made it out alive. Now, for a normal run, you can just keep reloading, it's not bad. I even did Brain Scorcher with an SMG uh, while I was playing Unisig, so... Um, 
with a Thales or a 9mm AUG um, with AP ammo, it can honestly do the job in here. But uh, it's it's not hard when you can just reload the autosave in the Brain Scorcher. But if you are running something uh, harder, like an Iron Man, I honestly suggest you overgear the hell out of yourself before coming here. Because, as you saw, we have Monolith with SR-25s, we have Monolith with RD-9x39, they throw grenades. So, an exosuit is honestly the bare minimum I would take in here. And I probably wouldn't take the body cooler, I'd get something else that raises um, ballistic resistance. And also, uh, this thing is... Uh, Oh, well, honestly, it's kind of almost fully upgraded when it comes to resistance, but make sure you have full upgrades before coming here, at least on the ballistic side, because, uh, yeah, otherwise you might get bopped. But this was it. Next time on Beginner Guides, we will do Laboratory X18, which is the laboratory I hate most. I really really dislike it it's the most random laboratory out there you get to fight the pseudo giant you get to fight poltergeists in a room full of barrels which is horrible and i even had snorks and fractures spawn on me as i entered uh the laboratory so yeah and controllers in the stairwells so honestly if you're doing iron man avoid x18 <laughs> just just don't go in there but anyway i will still do it just to show you where stuff are, stuff is and how i would go around to getting through it and honestly i would probably take the at least the same gear i take to the brain scorcher except uh maybe we will rely more on the shotgun because there are no mu uh, no no enemy stalkers in there and I'll take the Ecologist because it's friendly with the military and it's right underneath a military base. But yeah, that was it. I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to leave a like and a subscribe. And as always, I will see you all next time.